Hi, I'm Stephanie Sebbing from Quilt Addicts Anonymous, and this is a beginner quilting video tutorial series. Today I'm going to show you how to make the quilt sandwich, which is where we layer our top, our batting, and our backing together and secure it so it's ready for quilting. Before we get started, I just want to thank our sponsors, QT Fabrics. QT Fabrics proudly sponsors this video tutorial series by Quilt Addicts Anonymous. Join in the fabric fun over at QTFabrics.com. They imagine so you can create. So the first time anybody told me about making a quilt sandwich, I thought they were nuts. I had no idea what this term was. So if anyone tells you that, it's just a process where we layer in our quilt top as our top piece, our batting, so the warm fuzzy stuff inside that makes it all warm and cozy, and then our backing fabric. And so that's what makes the three layers in our sandwich. So for this project, I recommend using a cotton or a cotton blend batting. And the reason why is cotton will stick to cotton fabric. So we're gonna be quilting this on our home sewing machine and we wanna give ourselves all the favors we can get. So the easiest way to make that work really well is to uh, make sure we have a cotton or a cotton blend that is going to stick to our top layer of our quilt and our bottom layer of our backing because we don't want that to be slipping and sliding against a polyester product. And there are some really good polyester battings out there, but there also are some really bad ones that are gonna be really slick against your fabric. So just go buy a cotton or a cotton blend. I always use Quilted Dream in everything that I do. It comes in a natural, um, fiber, which is what this is. It's, it's a natural unbleached cotton. And then you often can get bleach. So if you have something that's a really white quilt, you might want to go with a bleach so that way you're not seeing that ivory coming through in the shadow. Um, but I almost always go with natural. It's a little bit less expensive. Um, the Cotton Poly Blend, it's called 8020, is also really good from them. And one thing you want to pay attention to is it will tell you how far apart you can quilt. So on this one, it tells me I can stitch up to eight inches apart. So it says that right on the batting. And so that tells you how densely you have to quilt it. Uh, if you do not follow the manufacturer's instructions, that batting can separate over time, but when you wash it and use it, and then you end up with these clumps and it just doesn't look good. So you wanna make sure you see that. Some battings will tell you you have to stitch as close as three inches apart. So that means you need to do a lot more stitching in the quilting phase. The other thing you want is you want something that has a really low loft. We're gonna be putting this entire quilt in the tiny little throat of our sewing machine. So we want to make sure that we're not have this big lofty batting that makes it challenging to get it all to fit underneath there. So the thinner the batting, the better, and definitely go with a cotton or cotton blend. So the first thing we have to do is we need to prepare our backing fabric. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to the side. Now, most backing fabric, you're gonna have to seam it together. There is 108 inch wide backing fabric that you can get. It often is going to be too much. You're gonna have a lot of waste. Um, like this one, it's just a lap quilt. 108 inches would be way too wide, but you wouldn't have to seam it. So most fabric, as we talked about in some of our earlier videos, is 40 to 42 inches wide. Well, our quilt is wider than that. So what I'm gonna do is first I'm going to, we have four and a quarter yards of backing fabric that we need for this quilt. So I'm gonna start by squaring up my edges because they're not straight from being cut off the bolt. So I'm gonna square up on my sides that are cut. I already have this folded in half. So I've got my two halves together here. And then I'm going to cut the side off as well where it's currently folded. And that way I will have two separate pieces. So let's do that first. So I'm just moving this down so that I have a nice straight edge to work with. And I have my edges here are lined up on top of each other because I want this to be as square as possible when I'm cutting this. So just like when we were cutting before, I'm gonna go ahead and line my ruler up and I've got an inch line on the fold of this fabric here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my side pieces because this really is not straight at all. And I wanna make sure that I'm at least gonna be cutting through all of it, and I am in this case. So now I can take my ruler and cut this all the way down. 
So now I've squared up one edge, we can set that to the side, we're not gonna need that anymore. Okay, so now, making sure that I'm moving this at the same rate, so like if you've ever folded a big sheet, I kind of pinch between my fingers, put my pointer finger in between the folds and kind of just pinch and pull. It's like if you're folding a big sheet set and you want it to be nice and straight. So I'm just gonna kind of walk that down evenly. So that way I can find my folded edge, which is down here. So this is where the fold is, where the two and a half comes together. So we're going to go ahead and line it up again with my inch line, even with the fold. And I'm actually gonna come around and cut from the other side because it's gonna be a little easier for me to cut on my right hand than that. So we'll do that. So now I'm just gonna slice off. Cutting from the opposite direction. So now if I were to measure this out, I would have two pieces that each measure about two and one eighth. And the reason why we need it that large is your backing and your batting fabric need to be 10 inches wider than your quilt top. The reason is sometimes when you're quilting, if you get really carried away and you do a lot of dense quilting, it's going to shrink up a little bit on you. And so you want to make sure that you have enough batting and backing on the sides to where if it does shrink, that you're not going to not have enough on the bottom because that would just be tragic. You'd have to cut your quilt down. So always make sure that your batting and backing are you have enough to be 10 inches wider on than your quilt top. Okay, so now we need to cut our selvages off. And we're going to do that by, now that I have these nice straight edges here, I'm gonna line those all up and I'm gonna fold this in half. Like this. And I wanna get it to lay nice and flat. All right, so I'm turning the mat and then I'm also lining up the folds all the way down. And then I'm just gonna smooth the fabric out to the side like this. And that'll help give me a nice straight edge to cut off. Now, it isn't super important that we get really specific with this, but what I wanna do is cut about an inch off from that selvage. So I just kinda have my ruler lined up so that the inch line is even with the edge of my selvages and I'm just gonna slice that off. You won't lose too much. And if your blade is a little bit dull, now's a good time to get a new one because you are going through quite a bit of fabric here, but it's a lot easier to do this all at once and kind of just maybe cut a couple times with that blade than it is to try to do it separately. And this goes so much faster. And we just don't want to leave the selvages in. It's going to wear differently and wash differently over time than the rest of the fabric. And it's just really bulky if you would have a big fat seam in there because you have to sew so much in because this does take up a lot of space with that white space. Go over it one more time. All right, so we've now cut off our selvages. There are a lot of projects that you can do with selvages, so if you have the space and you like to save things like this, you could, and you could have a nice record of all the fun fabrics that you've made projects from, but I usually toss mine. So now we've got to sew these together, so I'm gonna go grab my sewing machine. This is normally a project I would sit down to sew, um, but I wanted to have that take advantage of this nice big table that we have here in the shop to do the layering and basting on. So normally sit down at your sewing desk and do this. Don't try and do it standing up because there's gonna be a lot of fabric here that's gonna to try to drape down on you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unfold this. And I wanna make sure that I have two separate ones that I'm sewing together. All right, so I've got two, and I'm making sure that I'm gonna sew down the long edges. We don't wanna sew across the width of fabric, we wanna sew against the, the length of fabric. So I'm lining up my edges as best I can at the top there. And for this one, I'm gonna go ahead, you haven't seen me reinforce anything, but I am gonna reinforce the stitches at the top of here because I don't want this to come apart as I'm working with it and pinning it. We wanna make sure we have really nice, good seams. So now you just wanna sew your quarter inch stitch all the way down, what should be about two and an eighth 
yards of fabric. You do not have to pin this. That would really be a lot of pinning and it's really unnecessary. So all you need to do is what I do is I kind of put my fingers um, in between the fabrics and I just hold it in place and let my hand travel up with the fabric. And then when it's gone as far as it can, I kind of reposition. So just do it little bits at a time until you've gone through the whole piece. So I finished sewing my backing together. If your backing pieces are just a little off, one's a little bigger than the other, no big deal. Don't worry about trimming it up. If you were going to give it to a long armor, you would need to do that, but we're doing this on our home machine. So if it's a little off, no big deal at all. So I'm gonna press the seam open and you've got a lot of fabric at this point. So I'm just gonna kind of wrangle that a little bit. Now, all the other seams, we press them to one side or the other. For the backing seam, I like to press it really flat because, again, we want that to be as flat as possible when it's going through our sewing machine, so that way we don't have a, that much bulk to deal with when we're putting it through at the quilting stage. So to press it open, all I do is I open that seam with my fingertips, and then I will have my fingers all pressed down on this ahead of it, and that kind of opens the seam, it kind of finger presses it open a little bit and allows you to get a really nice flat seam. So go ahead and do that along the entire width of your backing. Okay, so I have finished pressing that seam open and now we're gonna start making our quilt sandwich by layering together our fabric backing, batting, and our top. Now, if you are doing this at home, if you're working on a dining room table, you're gonna to wanna to protect the surface. I've got my large mat out here, and that helps keep it nice and neat um, and keep from getting pinholes in there. You can move it around pretty easily by putting your hand underneath to make sure that that surface is protected. Um, I've also used a large card table. Um, a lot of times you get at big box stores, you can go buy a folding, it folds in half a table that's like three by six. That's perfect for doing something like this because you can take it out when you need it and put it back. If you're at home, you can get something called bed risers. You just go to the big box store and they're just little plastic bed risers that you put the legs of the table on. They're under 10 bucks. I've heard of people using soup cans, but you want to get it to countertop height because this does take a little bit of time. And if you're like leaning over, it can really make your back sore. So protect the surface you're working with get it to countertop height if possible. Um, I'm using the big table that we cut on here at the shop at Quilt Addicts Anonymous in Rock Island, Illinois. That's why we're not in my home sewing studio today because there just isn't enough room to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay this out and just kind of flip it up like it's a sheet at this point. We just want to lay it nice and flat. You want to make sure that your backing fabric is pressed pretty flat before you do this. And what I'm looking to do is get this center seam so that it's about in the middle of the table. And you're gonna to wanna to look at this from a couple of different angles. Like I'm gonna to walk to the side and look at it straight on and make sure that it's nice and center. And then I wanna make sure that there's equal sides hanging off the edges as well because we want to have our true center here. So it's just like when you're making a bed, you wanna make sure that it's centered on the bed and that you have equal drop on either sides. Okay, I've got everything pretty even, so I'm just gonna give it one more smoothing with my hands, get it nice and flat. Now it's time for the batting. So make sure you save the piece of information with your batting, everyone will come with it. It will tell you how closely you need to quilt this. In my case, it's eight inches, but yours might be as small as three. So make sure you save this so that when, you, when you're quilting, you know what you need to do to work with this. Now batting has a right and a wrong side. Most batting is needle punched. And that leaves dimples on one side and what we call pimples or bumps on the other side. So, show you the difference here. So here you can see this is the side that is smooth, where the, the part has been pushed down, the dimples. And then the pimples, the bumps are on this side, so it's, it's rougher. We've got a nice smooth area and then a nice bumpy area. That bumpy area is gonna stick better to the top of your quilt, so that's the side you want facing up. So just take a look at your quilt batting, 
determine which side looks smoother than the other and place the smooth side against your backing fabric. Now, not all, but most battings come pretty neatly folded up. So it almost is easier to figure out where that fold is for your center, which in this case, it's right here and kind of line that up along that center seam because we know that that's center. And then you can kind of smooth it out, make sure you have equal amounts hanging on the side. And this just kind of makes your life a little easier if you can smooth it out nicely. Now, some battings, when you unroll them, they're really wrinkly and you can't get them to lie flat. So if that's the case, what you should do is you should put it in the dryer on a low setting with a damp washcloth for like five, 10 minutes, and that will kind of help steam the wrinkles out and then you'll be able to work with it a lot easier. So now I'm just unfolding this across the other side. So this next part, I can tell you what to feel for, but you really are just gonna have to feel it for yourself. What you wanna do is you wanna smooth from the center out across the entire top and really just work one side at a time. And you wanna make sure there are no lumps and bumps that you can feel either from the batting or the backing fabric. You wanna make it just as smooth as you possibly can get it. So I've got one side done, I'm gonna go on the other side and do that side as well. Now I'm finally ready to lay our quilt top on because we've got everything smoothed out. Now, just like before, we need to find our center. So here's my center seam right here. I had already folded it in half. If it has been a little while since you have finished doing the top, you may wanna give it a good press because again, if you quilt in a wrinkle, it's gonna be in there forever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay this out. I'm gonna have that center seam right on top of our center where, and I can tell real easily because there's this nice fold here in the batting. So I'm gonna lay the center right on top of that and then I know that everything, I'm gonna have enough fabric and batting all around. All right, so I've got that center laid out. And just like before, you wanna have about the same amount draped on either side so you can keep it nice and smooth. And I can kind of feel as I'm going across this where that center seam is. And again, that's just something you've gotta to learn to feel as you're doing this. Okay, now that I'm pretty happy with it being centered widthwise and then across that center, now I can start smoothing out again. So just like before, I'm gonna work from the center out and just smooth that real nice. I'm not worrying yet on the stuff that's draping down beyond the table. I'm just concentrating on getting this part as smooth as possible. We'll deal with the overhang later. Go ahead and work from the other side, get that nice and smooth too. So now it's time to pin. I keep mine in my very fancy rice pudding container. They've been in this thing for years. Uh, you want to, when you're shopping for pins, get ones that are kind of bigger. These are about one and three quarter inches here. It's a lot easier to work with than these tinier ones because you're going to be sort of digging in and getting through all three layers with those. So what I'm gonna do, when I first quilt this, and you kind of have to think about these decisions when you're pinning, is I'm gonna quilt a wavy line down each of the seam lines for our blocks. So here's like halfway point of our block and here. I'm gonna pin right in the center of all of these blocks. And that is going to be far enough away from my initial quilting lines to where I won't have to be pulling those pins out constantly as I'm working. So to pin, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rock it down and get it through all three layers and then bring it back up and secure that pin. And this is why it's really good to protect your tabletop, especially if you're working on a dining room table. You do not wanna to have to refinish your dining room table because you layered and basted your quilt on it without any protection. Now you need something that the pins are gonna be able to come off of really easily. So your mat that you use to cut all your strips is a really good option for that because you can poke your pin into it, it'll pop right back up and nothing is gonna hurt your table that way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep putting pins in across the entire part that is on top of the table right now. Just a little tip, if you do get blood on your quilt, your own saliva will get your own blood out. And I've tested it, it works. All right, so I've pinned everything that's on top of my table. Now I need to rotate this a little bit so that way I can 
pin the sides. So before I tug right and left, because I have more hanging down on the sides than I do on my left and right side, I've got more hanging down on the front and the back than I do on the right and left, is I'm just going to grab it and move it just a little bit. So now this revealed my final rope to the side here. So I'm gonna go ahead and smooth that out. Again, you just wanna make sure that there are not any lumps or bumps that are gonna get quilted in. This does get more challenging if you're working with a larger quilt. You might wanna get a larger surface. So if you have two large banquet tables that you have for when you have parties and guests and things, those work really well. I've secured the sides of it with binding clips to help keep things in place, that works too. All right, so I did those four. Now I'm going to grab, I'm gonna gently pull it back the other way. Now I can smooth this down and get my other side and then my entire center it will be basted. Okay, so my entire center is now basted with pins. Now I need to get the bits that are hanging off the table in right in front of me and then on the other side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pull it toward me first, and I'm gonna come around to the other side, smooth everything out, and then pin these guys down. Again, always smooth from the center out. Otherwise, you could end up with a lumper bump in the center that is never going to get out of there. All right, so I've got that side done. Now I need to give it another tug to get at my left corner. And every time you move this about, you need to re-smooth it. All right, so I'm on the home stretch. I've got the last drapey part. I've got to smooth everything out, working from that center out again, as always. And I'm just getting it as flat as I can, making sure there's no lumps or bumps from the top, the batting, or backing as I'm working. Once I'm satisfied, then I can go ahead and start pinning. So I finished pin basting my quilt. I'm ready to quilt now, except I've got a whole lot of extra fabric. Unless you exactly cut your batting and backing to exactly 10 inches larger than your quilt top, you're always gonna have this problem. So what I like to do is give it a little trim, and that way I'll make sure I just have about five or so inches extra, and I don't have to worry about it being bunched up when I'm quilting. So you can do this with scissors, but probably the easier way is to use your ruler and your rotary cutter. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna line up the five inch mark with the edge of my quilt here, my quilt top, and I'm going to start trimming away. And you can save this extra batting. It makes great projects for like doll quilts or placemats, and you can definitely reuse all of this and something else. So just keep on trimming, going all the way around your quilt, and then we're gonna be ready for the next tutorial where we show you how to quilt it on your home sewing machine. Look at all this extra bulk that we cut off by just trimming it to five inches outside of our quilt top. This quilt is gonna be much easier to manage when we sew it on our home sewing machine. All right, so I'm gonna show you one last tip to get this ready to quilt, and this is gonna make it a lot easier when you go to sew it together. So ideally, you're gonna start quilting right away, um, but I wouldn't really wanna fold this all up because then things might shift on it a little bit, me, between when I get it from here to my sewing machine. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna roll it, and I'll show you how to do that. So I've got my quilt top nice and flat on the surface, and I'm just gonna start by folding over that extra five-inch piece. And then I'm gonna fold that on top of itself, so it's about two and a half inches. And then I'm gonna keep rolling, making sure I'm going from one side of the quilt to another so that it's nice and even. If you have a friend, that helps as well. Significant other, anybody you can con into helping you with this step. But the key is just to roll it nice and evenly until you hit about the center. All right, I think I have one more to do and then I'm center. Okay, so now I've got it nice and rolled smooth. When I quilt this for the first time, I'm gonna quilt across this way. So I haven't introduced any folds that are gonna get in the way of my quilting. Now I'm gonna go roll it from the other side. Flip this around so I can do it that way. And 
and we won't have both sides rolled when we are quilting, but what this will do is it'll make it easy to transport. It's small enough. You can put it on your table for a night um, if it's going to be a little bit before you actually start quilting it but it'll keep it nice and flat. You won't get wrinkles after we spent so much time getting it nice and flat to baste it and it'll be ready to go. So I'm kind of just turning this into a giant hot dog. All right, so here we go. I've got my giant fabric rolled up. All I can see is the back and I'm ready to start quilting this when I get back to my home studio. But for right now, I can just kind of carry it out to my car, drive home like this, put it in the back seat, and it'll be good to go when I get home. Make sure you check out our next video tutorial where we'll show you how to quilt this on your own home sewing machine. If you haven't already, make sure you go over to shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. You can get the free video tutorial for this pattern, and we'll send you a special coupon code that you can use to get everything you need to get started quilting. As always, a big thanks to our sponsors, QT Fabrics. They are proudly sponsored this video tutorial series from Quilt Addicts Anonymous. Make sure you join in the fun over at QTFabrics.com. They imagine so you can create. Until next time, happy quilting.